Ladies and gentlemen, join us today is my friend Vicky Rose. She is running her state representative in Mississippi to represent the 37th district. Someone I've known just around the country for years from libertarian events and as a fan of freedom, attending some of our tour events. I think, Vicky, is your signature on the wall in here in our retro studio? It might be. Here, this isn't what I normally do on, I'm pretty sure it is. But I, I don't normally do this on, on an interview, but just so everybody sees the retro studio That's that we're, oh my gosh, it's such a mess. I don't want to show the messy part, but there's the ceiling. You can see, yes, there's a reason it looks like a public restroom in here uh, because we did a lot of tours for the book and, and that's how I met Vicky uh, years ago. So Vicki, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to this race in particular. I was really excited to run for the race in 2019 because I knew that Gary wasn't going to have an appointment and an opponent. The district is extremely gerrymandered and he's a Republican. It's a Republican held district. And I knew that I could garner some of the independent votes and some of the disenfranchised Republican voters who really just don't like him. And then also the Democrat vote. And it was our our state elections are in odd years. So it was in 2019. He was ill. He had a stroke in 2018, and I even had lobbyists approaching me during my race in 2019 saying, I can understand why Gary is still running for this race. He will get in the elevator, and he can't remember where he is. He doesn't even know what building he's in. And lawmakers would approach me and say, Vicki, you should really be here. We really want to work with you. And we don't understand why Gary's running again, but he ran again. Donald Trump came to Mississippi two days before our general election. Pence came one day before. They both said a vote for a Republican is a vote for Donald Trump because at that time he was going through all of the hearings, the impeachment hearings. And so if you vote for a Republican lawmaker in Mississippi, it's going to guarantee that I'm not going to be impeached, whereas the state has literally nothing to do with the federal, but they bought it. And our entire executive branch went Republican in that race. And it's never happened in Mississippi before. And I was listening to Democrats and independents who were also running for various offices across the state. And their numbers were like mine. We're getting 40, 50, 60 percent on the ground with our polling. And we're looking really good for Election Day. Trump came in and he did a big old sweep across the state. He resigned in June. He claims it has to do with his wife falling down and him not being able to be there. But I know for a fact that he has been in rehab, um, not far from the Capitol and from where his second house is in Jackson. So I have a feeling that part of it is because of what he had happened to him in April. So there are two other people in this race. It's a special election. And what's really great about this election is that we are all nonpartisan on the ballot. We're all listed as independents. So it evens the playing field. It's a name recognition game. I've already raised over $10,000 since July 31st, and I need about six more thousand dollars to get my marketing campaign up to par to achieve all of the initiatives that I have laid out. And the other two people who are on the ballot are claiming Republican status. And so I'm, again, I'm pulling and trying to get the get out the vote work. I've got some Democrats that are supporting me that are doing the work for me also. It's just a really exciting time. I got over 1,600 votes about between 6,800 and 7,500 people will show up in a general election for this race. And we're expecting maybe 3,000 at the most to show up for this special election. So it sounds like you found a really cool opportunity to have a winnable race for a libertarian taking a state rep seat. I mean, that's that's pretty unusual. And Vicki, I didn't think we were going to go this way with it, but since you've got one senile old dude supporting another one here, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't think Trump was senile like when he took office or, you know, maybe, maybe just a little like a starting to set in, like, you know, kind of on a Reagan timeline. But now, you you know, uh, man, woman, camera, TV, dog, horse, elephant. See, I'm competent. You go, uh, are you sure? And I would I would love nothing more right now than to see Donald Trump, Joe Biden, and Joe Jorgensen take a side-by-side -side test, you know, live, administered by a professional, impartial judge. Just, are, are they competent? Like, like you know, are they, are they seen? Can, would you, 
Would you be willing to? Would you do that? Would you challenge your your opponents in this race to a cognitive test? That would be really fun. But I do believe that my opponents in this particular race are they they are operating with all of their marbles. I guess you could say. Except for the statism part. Yeah, there's that to be considered. But you mentioned you mentioned getting Joe side by side. So this race, I only have I think it's 37 days left to my race. It's September 22nd. So when I win this race, it's four days after the first presidential debate, a libertarian in MAGA State, Mississippi wins. I mean, we should be writing the press releases right now so that we can promote Joe Jorgensen and get the excitement going to get her on that debate stage. Hey, a woman in Mississippi, 100 years after a woman had the right to vote, as a libertarian, won and we're denying the right for a woman to be on the debate stage against the other presidential candidates. Pretty big opportunity, Vicki. So what about your personal background, your connection to Mississippi is, is empowering you the most to connect with voters? I have been polit politically active to some degree since 2007 with the Ron Paul campaign. So I, uh, and that's when I actually first learned about you, the Ron Paul campaign, 2007. And I, we probably connected on some of those message boards uh, way back when. And, um, but with Mississippi, I've been here 13 years and I've lived in this district for 13 years. And my family moved from Minnesota because we were witnessing the progressive nature toward them. Actually, one of the big factors for us leaving Minnesota was there was a bill in the House Health Committee that would have stated that blood is no longer considered DNA. And I told my husband, we're getting out of here because if they're proposing this as legislation, even if it doesn't make it out of committee and doesn't get passed, this is scary stuff. This is just like Hitler's Germany. And I don't want to be here when it happens. So uh, he said, yes, we're going. I hate the cold. I hate the snow. Mississippi is a little bit more free for businesses. So we moved down here. And my work here in Mississippi, I've been able to accomplish things on the local level with my local government. I'm kind of a force to be reckoned with. I have people calling on me and asking my opinions, seeking my endorsements, even though I'm not actually um, elected yet. And I have been successful in the last year in preventing Kratom from being banned in the state of Mississippi. So I've gotten quite a big support with that initiative. In fact, we were down at the Capitol in March of this year, and we were able to get a public hearing between the public, um, the Drug Policy Committee on both chambers, and we packed out that room. It was an amazing opportunity to see the testimony, those up against and those for Kratom. So are you having any challenges campaigning with Corona? How are people in Mississippi dealing with this? It's hit and miss. So when I'm knocking on doors, some people will just, you know, they'll either not answer or if they'll, they, they answer and they're offended by it, you can clearly tell. But for the most part, people are quite receptive to it. I will, for some people, if they don't want to, I was having to gather signatures to get on this ballot. In Mississippi, we have amazing ballot opportunities. If you are a member of any registered party within the state, you do not have to get petitions to get on the ballot. You just sign your name and you're on it. But because this is a special election, every candidate had to get 50 qualified signatures of registered voters. So I was knocking on doors. It's better than going out and uh, just asking my friends because it grows awareness for my campaign. And there were mm, uh, maybe one or two people who refused to take my literature, refused to talk to me. I wore my uh, face shield or my face mask and I would go out. Some people would want oh, to- so, so not person. just a mask, you wear, you wear the full shield over the face. I, I don't wear both at the same time. I was out in Arizona helping uh, Marissa Hamilton get on the ballot to run for mayor of Phoenix. And I, I wore that out there and it was so much easier than wearing the mask. I mean, you could just flip up the shield, get some air in, come back to Mississippi knocking doors. And yes, it's so much more easy, but you have the humidity factor here. So it's a little bit different. No, it's funny that you still have to do, but yeah, the, the shield actually ends up being the more practical way of connecting with people and they can see your whole face. It feels, yeah, right. And it, it feels silly because it's like this extra thing. But if you want to talk about limiting projectiles and still being able to project, we're weaponizing spittle now. You can be charged with assault. Anyway, uh, I'm just, uh, I'll stop. I want, I want to give you the chance to talk about 
you know, first, uh, what's at stake in this race for Mississippi, aside from, hey, the Libertarian Party could have someone who's elected to a state rep office uh, as a Libertarian? You know, I, I, we, we just were talking about uh, our friend Laura Epke, who, who, who you know, um, and there, there were two other state reps who transferred, changed the affiliation from Republican to Libertarian last cycle, and they both lost, or all three of them. Law, so to have one you you know elected as a libertarian be a big deal, but uh, and, and there's a lot I, I would love like of all the people out there who could be the represent this for the libertarian Vicky having you get that extra national platform and the opportunity to make a story out of your race I think you can make the VLP really proud and are really deserving of our support here. But to go into Mississippi, like what are your priorities? What's at stake? What does this mean to the residents of Mississippi to have you? in office. Have you heard about the issues going on with our prisons in Mississippi that's been making national news? I, I am, well, I, I have always been aware that prisons in Mississippi have been particularly brutal and poorly run, and I'm not surprised to see the recent headlines that they're not doing corona particularly well either. Now, we have, for example, one prison in Mississippi is called Parchman, and it was built um, in the very early 1900s. It has not been updated since it was built. We have prisoners that are living in very inhumane conditions. And unfortunately, we have some voters who believe, well, they did the crime. They should do the time. You know, they should suffer the consequences of it. In my particular legislative district here um, in my area, it's called the Golden Triangle. So at the top where I live is called West Point. And we have Columbus on the south west and starkville on the southeast point of the triangle and in this area we have you know the our legislative body who you know will go to jackson and the majority of them are we're really pushing for criminal justice reform it's a very big issue in our state because at the root of it when we have systemic poverty in our state and you look at how mississippi is literally number two in the world per capita of number of people incarcerated, we have a problem. And when you consider the fact that incarceration leads to poverty in the family system, it leads to the breakdown of the family, the children are losing their mothers and their fathers. And this just, I mean, yes, black men are incarcerated at a very much higher rate than the white man, but the white woman is incarcerated in Mississippi at the same um, disproportionate rate in comparison to the black woman. So when you consider the impact that has in the breakdown of the family and when these people um, have done the time for their crime and as um, Spike Cohen talks about the cash bail, ending cash bail, that would be something that would greatly benefit because we have so many people who would take the plea bargains and they're sitting in prison for years in Mississippi. We have one teenager. He just spent his 16th birthday in Mississippi for a crime he didn't commit and he's still sitting there for two years now. He's being charged as a violent offender for something he didn't commit. And then when he gets out of prison, it's going to stay on his record. I have one man who lives um, just outside of my district in a town called Caldonia. And he is um, 63 years old. He committed a crime when he was in his early, um, early, very early 20s, I think he was 19 or 20 years old. The next crime he committed was a couple of decades later. The third crime, he was uh, arrested for possession of meth. He was called a habitual offender, a white man. He got two life sentences without parole, 30 years, a business owner with a health crisis. It's just one example of how our system breaks down the family unit. It causes a burden on the financial system in our state when these individuals cannot work because they get out of prison and they're a felon, they cannot work. So then they have to draw on the unemployment system or I'm sorry, not the unemployment, but the social welfare system where their family members do. And then the, and then the children who end up in the foster care system, I'm sorry, my children are in the background here. The children who end up in the foster care system, 80% of them end up in the prison system themselves. So we're just perpetuating the cycle and we're allowing it con to continue. So I really believe that, I'm sorry. My oh, it's beautiful background noise. 
Um, I really believe that focusing on criminal justice reform will benefit Mississippi greatly, even though there are a lot of people who really don't fully understand. And our school systems, they need more local support. We need to end Common Core. We need to get it out of our systems. We need to allow the teachers to be able to teach and do what they went to school to do. If we're going to continue the public education system at all, they need to be able to do what they're what they went to school to do and do with their passion and do what right, they're big, good at. Big, we've got just a minute here. I'm really excited by the possibility of having someone like you in the state house in Mississippi pulling for prison and criminal justice reform. It is something that is way overdue there and something that I think you, even as, as one state rep, could have a really meaningful impact because there is a particular viciousness to the police state in Mississippi that needs to be addressed. Vicki, we have just a minute left here. If you could tell us, please, how to connect with you and, and why people should contribute to your race. You said you were at $10,000. Your next goal is 16000 The website is voteforvicky.com. Very exciting race. I think this is a great investment for the libertarian movement as a whole. I hope that you can raise the ne next $6,000 just from this interview. What's your pitch? Sorry. I, uh, right now, we have families who are suffering in Mississippi because our lawmakers continue to take more and more money from them through the tax system and through the burdens that they continue to put on families. We're not able to succeed here. So putting money into this campaign not only helps the families of Mississippi, which is 50th in almost every category, but also helps the entire country. Because remember, my race is on September 22nd. You send a libertarian for the very first time to a state office in Mississippi. That's going to make headlines nationwide if we capitalize on it. It will only help the rest of the candidates across the country, including our U.S. congressional races, our U.S. Senate races, and the state house races, and our presidential candidate and her vice president presidential um, helper there. I'm sorry, my kid is distracting me. If you want to <laughs> help me, you can and help all of the Libertarian Party. That is my Facebook page, Mrs. V Vicki Rose from Mississippi House 37. You can also go to voteforvicki.com. You can contribute there. My uh, PO box, if you want to send a check that's on there, there is no cap for um, donations as long as you're an American citizen. If it is a corporation, there's a $1,000 cap on that. But otherwise, there is no cap for contributions if you would like to contribute to my campaign. And the other important fact I need to get across here is if I do run, end up in a runoff that will be three weeks after September 22nd, I will need an influx of cash after that also. But my goal is to win this outright with 50 plus 1% of the vote on September 22nd. Well, keep us posted, Vicky. If we have to, we'll have you on again one way or another, either for the final push or for the victory lap. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get Vicky to her goal here with fundraising. The website is voteforvicky.com. Thanks so much for joining us.